Hello, folks. Welcome to a brand new episode of Smoke Have You Got Them, the show that keeps on giving. This is, uh, this are the basic rules. You need to have two joints ready for this because we're listening to a hell of a record today. One per side. That's just how we do it. Now, for today's record of choice, the Oracle of Oxford County. Ladies and gentlemen, today we listen to Arsenal from Russia, the USSR at the time, 1970. Nine, mm. jazz fusion from Russia. Is that what it is? Seventy nine, jazz fusion, progressive rock. Okay, <clears throat> I'm ready to do this. Let's go check this out. Let's do it, folks. Smoke if you got them. Smoke if you got them. <laughs> All right, Arsenal. How? How how'd you how'd pop this into this? This how'd is crazy. This, how did this happen? And how come we've never heard of this before? <laughs> Arsenal. Interesting. It's uh, the leader is Alexei Kozlov, a self-taught saxophone player, plays alto and soprano sax. Mm. It is his band. Um, they started in the early 70s, 72. This is their first album. 1979 and I was reading about them and I thought to myself how hard it would be to have this type of music in the USSR at the time because very this is like the the height of communism you know and this is the most western sounding album that we've this is crazy It's, it's 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 a mix of of contemporary sounds of the times right yeah you know, like the horn section is very of the time. It's not 10 years. It's, it's not like you see in a lot of times in Eastern European countries like those, you know, they make fun of they're behind the times, you know. They, and, and this, this is this, not behind the not times behind, at all. Not times at all. No. And, and what's interesting is that it got even recorded to me back then, 1979. And he basically had to become somewhat official. Uh, the government had to approve of him, you know. Right. Yeah, everything has to go through the state. Yeah, like there's no way around it. Um, this, uh, this, uh, first of all, the opening track to this thing, uh, it's blew my mind. It, it blew my mind. Uh, uh, shades of I wrote down if Chicago and King Crimson did a tour together. All right, that's very good. Um, lots of uh, it made me think a lot about the Riff Bear Orchestra, Sam Rivers Big Band. Um, very good. And uh, it also in the sax work, it reminded me of Sam's of Sam Rivers' solo work um, and trio work. Uh, I hadn't heard a combination of chords and um, and harmony uh, like that since I heard Sam's stuff. Funky drums too. Super funky drumming. Uh, the way that this was mixed was incredible. The drums sit in the middle, but the horn section basically sits in the back of your head while the guitar and the bass, which are both spitting hot fire. Yes. Uh, is just impressive. And it's 13 minutes long. It doesn't, does not give up. No, not at all. Not at all. What, uh, how big is the band? The, what do you think of the second track? What a page turner, like in terms of like, you want to check out a different sort of vibe. Uh, the playing around with the polyrhythms and the rhythms was incredible. Um, the, the I do main... like, I, I did want to make a note before we moved out of the first note uh, about the first track is it, you got to be real bold to kick the first solo off the record to have it be a trombone. Right. <sighs> yeah. The, the, you, they got a guitar player, piano player, bass, Two tr- uh, two trumpets, three trombones, two drummers, uh, two, two drummers on one track. Wow! So, and and it's interesting. The the obviously the, the leader being a saxophone player makes sense about the horn section being so hip, right? Yeah, everything is super hip. But really, because of of the music, and it's so funny, and it's so stupid to say it, but the it being Russian, right? Like so you think of like the composers, classical composers. There is there has to be a little bit of in there because you have obviously the jazz and the funk flavor, but there's just like the layering of it was very 
almost avant garde classical at times. Like no, it's the cross it's rhythms. A, the, exactly, the cross rhythms that are happening are crazy because the music around you know the the movements that are happening here with the music are so complex. And um, blew, blew me away. Yeah, I, I hadn't. Uh, from the time frame, from the place that we're talking about, the type of music that came out as soon as the as the because it was super funky though. This the thing is, it's super funky and clean. The horns sound clean. Uh, every, every, everything I I am impressed. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's flip this over because I want to talk a little bit about the uh, sound mixing, and, and we still got another another side to go. Folks, put down what you're doing. Light that second one up. Join us in the journey. Smoke if you got them. Let's go. Do it. What are we listening to? Arsenal from Russia, their debut, self-titled. Now, the the stream that I got off of this uh, when I was when I was listening to the record's been up for a couple of years, and it's very rare that you find something on, on any streamable website that you'll find like a record that's this deep and heavy with like maybe 250 listens after being up for three years. Like this is a deep, deep spot. How did you find this record? <clears throat> nah, it was, my ear's close to the ground, buddy. What can I tell you? It's just mm. close to the ground. These wild cards are just fucking coming up strong, boy. I got to find the gold for people and myself and you. And you know, you you were just delivering like crazy. Now, what was the standout for you on this side? Because uh, to me, it's just a continuation of that first side, like crazy. But that first track really just first took track me. was so powerful. So on powerful. side one, yeah. Although I think, and I think like the second track's not as good, but it's still great, right? It's not, it's not nothing is really bad. The concept thought, is cool. I thought this side was a little bit more balanced. Yeah, not so much highs and lows as greatness, but there was one. Particular remember what part it was for the track i think it is the second track ivory tower okay that was the one the the horn section really layered it on me on that one yeah it's uh it's interesting how uh the mixing of this album right because they they were very it's a, it's obviously a horn heavy band. These things usually don't tend to go well for the late seventies. Uh, European studios. We're not used to hearing stuff that is so warm this way. And it, it really just the, the the everything is covered. Every corner of this album is covered in terms of tonality. Uh, funky keyboard playing. Everything. <sighs> What's well, the deal I, with I this dig band? the guitar player. I dig the guitar player. The guitar and player is funky. So what's interesting is I was reading about the band, the, the 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 saxophone leader. He was saying that it was hard to find musicians to play what he wanted to play in Russia at the time, which because, makes sense because rock music was so new in Russia, yeah, and still was not cool. So everything was underground. And you couldn't go play rock, and you know couldn't play rock gigs any any place in Russia. Yeah, and the players at the he said. Be, weren't very good, right? They're very rudimentary players. So they weren't good enough to play, technically good enough to play the music he wanted to play. Right. And um, the classical people had no concept, like they were the best musicians, he said, but they all they could play was classical music. They couldn't improvise at all. And we're not listening to, obviously, what this guy was listening to and how he got the records. Like, what a cool in person. Like, Oh, this dude had it all. Forging, forging his own way, really. Yeah. So the, he said that was the hardest part. He said was finding, finding the right, finding people to be able to play the music he wanted to play, the mix. Mm-hmm. And so you said this is the first one. Uh, are there any more records that come out? For oh, this there's, band? Lo- there's lots, actually. Oh, this is an interesting story, man. This this band, this music was really something else. Um, this is the first one. And I think, uh, yeah, they got one in 83, 85, 86, a double album, another double album in 86, 91, 91, and a live album in 2000. They keep on coming. He doesn't they stop, keep on, buddy. Wow. 2003, 2004, 2005. I got to go on a deep dive on YouTube on this, dude, because this is this is massive. Alexei Kozlov. Big ups. Um, Respect, Alexei Kozlov. He sounds like a saxophone player. 
looks like the newest album by him is 2012 or 2013, and then 2016 they put out a live concert from 74. Mm. Um, so, so it's yeah. it's an extensive it's an extensive catalog. Uh, is there any demand for this album out in uh, out in the uh, money world? Got good news for you. Got very affordable, extremely affordable album. The cheapest record yet. We've we've gone over. Really? You can you can get yourself an original copy for for like five bucks. This five music bucks. five dollars. Now you got to ship it from from Russia, but yeah, five hey. bucks. Five bucks. You end up paying like maybe thirty two, that's fair. Wow. That's incredible. Well, uh, you know, this was uh this was yet another wild card that's crazy. Um So you're gonna pick did, one up for yourself and one for me, you're saying. Yeah, no shit. Put it put it in uh put it in a nice box to send it over because man, this this was uh this one uh was really interesting. Where are we going tomorrow? Let's go to let's go to England. Let's go okay. to England. It's going to be hard to top the last three we've done here, but here we go. Jolly old England it is. Yeah, let's try it out. And uh, tomorrow edition of Smoke If You Got Them, folks. Let's do it. Dig that.